Hello friends and fellow bibliophiles, welcome back to Cat's Novel Adventures. I'm doing a tag, y'all. The Finally Fall Book Tag. I was tagged by two amazing booktubers, Janet Bookish Blonde and Amy at Amy Noel Reads. Now, Amy did tag me last fall and I wasn't able to get to it, so I'm very happy that Jen tagged me this year. Both of these lovely ladies have wonderful channels that are worth checking out. Now, both Jen and Amy have the same prompts. However, Amy had two extra prompts in her tag that I've decided to include in mine. Also, we have no idea who the original creator is, so we'll just go with author unknown. So there are 11 prompts, and the first prompt is, in fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. I chose Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon. This is a story about the Constantine family that moves from Manhattan to a New England farming village. They are welcomed with open arms and the town matriarch gets really friendly with them and encourages them to get involved and even invites them to their yearly festival called Harvest Home. Well, it doesn't take much time for Theodore Constantine to realize that there is something a little bit off about this village. They have some secrets and some of them are sinister. Well, this is what I would consider folk horror but it does have a vivid setting that is perfect for the fall. Prompt number two is nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. I have chosen Beloved by Toni Morrison. This is a story about Setha, a runaway slave who has lost her husband and a child, and she is trying very hard to beat back the past. Unfortunately, she is having a hard time with that when she is visited by a disturbing apparition that calls herself Beloved. This book is haunting but beautifully written and I loved it so very much. It was one of my favorite books that I read in 2023 and if you have not read it, I would highly recommend it. Prompt number three, fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. I thought this was a hard prompt to answer because I feel like I learned something new from every nonfiction book that I read. So I decided which book did I have on my shelf for a long time and that I've read the most time. So I decided to go with A New Earth, Awaken Into Your Life's Purpose by Eckhart Tolle. I feel like every time I read this book, I get something new out of it. But this book really taught me about being in the present moment, that if you need to center yourself and be present, it will help you not be so stressed out because you're worrying about something that is about to happen in the future, or you're thinking about something that happened in the past that's causing you worry. Well, guess what? We only have the present moment. So it's like learning how to bring yourself to that moment. And it does make a big difference if you can remember to do it. Also, learning about the ego and how our attachment to the ego causes so much negativity in our lives. And so this book really has helped me on my happiness journey and has really helped me when I need to make some tough decisions. Prompt number four, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with people we love. Name a fictional family, household, or friend group that you'd like to be a part of. Well, I'd like to be part of the Hogwarts family. I love all things Harry Potter. I love Butterbeer. Think of the magical creatures I would meet. There's also Quidditch. And you know what? I already have my wand. I am a Hufflepuff. And I think I'd be good at teaching muggle studies. Prompt five, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. Well, here is my pile. What a gorgeous pile of books. And I think all of these would be perfect to read during the fall. 
Prompt number six, fall is the perfect time for storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. And I have two fantastic books to share with you. And the first one is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. A young lawyer is telling a story to his young stepchildren about his terrifying experience at the Eel Marsh House. This has gothic vibes. It's a ghost story. It is perfect for the spooky season. One of my favorites. And then the other one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This story has Victor Frankenstein sharing his creation, his monster, and everything that happens in the aftermath of making his monster. He's sharing that story with Captain Walton. I love this story as well. I actually got to see a stage performance of this with my husband a couple of days ago, and it was wonderful. My friend played Mary Shelley, and she did a fantastic job, as well as the rest of the cast. But yeah, if you haven't read Frankenstein, I would highly recommend it. Prompt number seven, the nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. I have three I wanna share with you, and the first one is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This is about a haunted house called the Finch House that has been empty for decades until four horror writers are invited to spend Halloween night there. And the next one is Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. This is about a retired death metal rock god who likes to collect the macabre. Well, he happens to purchase a dead man's suit that is said to be haunted by a restless spirit. And last but not least is one of my favorite Stephen King books, and that is Salem's Lot, perfect for the fall season. And it is about Ben Mears, who goes back to Jerusalem's Lot to write a book. But he's not the only person that comes to town. And that other person, hmm, creates a lot of problems for the town folk. All three books, in my opinion, are creepy good reads and perfect for the spooky season. Prompt eight, the days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. And I have three for this prompt as well. And the first one is Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is a delightful, heartwarming story about two sisters who are raised by their aunts who are witches and about all of the shenanigans that they get up to. I really, really enjoyed this book. There's a lot of romance to it, but there's also some witchy vibes and humor and heart all mixed together. And then the next book is a graphic novel called Garlic and the Vampire by Brie Paulson. This is a very fallish feeling. I really enjoyed it. The characters are just so precious. It's very heartwarming. Lots of wonderful messages throughout. And Garlic, just an adorable little character. And then last but not least, it's not maybe fall specific, but it's a whole series that I absolutely adore. And it's so heartwarming. And I love this character. And that is Paddington Bear. There are quite a few books in the series, but this little bear has touched my heart and I absolutely adore him. He gets into all kind of sticky situations, but he also comes out of it smelling like a rose. Lots of fun. I think anyone who picks up a Paddington book will absolutely fall in love with Paddington as much as I have. Prompt number nine, fall returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. For me, that would be Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is about Count Dracula and his journey from his castle in Transylvania to London, where he is in search of blood to stay alive. I love this novel. I love the format because it is told through letters, diary entries, as well as newspaper articles. It's a lot of fun. Prompt number 10, fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessories. I have a couple 
and I always like to have a blanket on hand and I have quite a few of them, but the one I wanna share with you is one that really shouts fall and that is my pumpkin and sunflower blanket. It's a very, very soft, very comfortable. I love to get under a blanket when I read. I also like to have a hot beverage and in the evenings, I will drink a cup of tea and I found a good one for the fall. It is called pumpkin spice chai. This is by Tazo, really have enjoyed it this season. And I generally drink my tea out of a Yeti mug. This will keep my tea hot for much longer. Now, sometimes I am up early in the morning and it is dark, so I still wanna be cozy and I'll drink a hot beverage in the morning and it's usually coffee. And I'll drink it out of a mug. Here's one of my favorite fall mugs leaves are falling i love snoopy and this one also has a leaf in the bottom of it which i think is great and as far as coffee goes during the fall they have one by community that you can only get in the fall and that is spice pumpkin pecan pie really love this flavor and then another one i like to drink during the fall but i can drink it really any time of the year but it's a nice one for the fall too is pecan praline these are both by community. They are delicious in my opinion. And then sometimes I like to burn a candle. I generally like to burn the candle when I am in the living room in my comfy brown chair. And one that I like to burn is pumpkin pecan waffles. It is a combination of maple syrup, golden waffles, and pumpkin spice. Oh my goodness, when you smell it, Oh, it makes you want to have a waffle with lots of syrup on top. And then also, I like to keep my books in a book sleeve. And my most recent book sleeve is one that looks like Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. I got this from Lindsay at Lindsay's Little Library. She has an Etsy shop and she has some fantastic book sleeves. I have not gotten one for the spooky season yet. I don't know why I'm dragging my feet, but I really do need to get one. And... I have some other items that I picked up this fall. I just recently released a fall haul video. If you wanna check out any of the newest blankets or candles or mugs that I've gotten, check that out too as well. Prompt number 11, spread the autumn appreciation and tag some people. I tag Alex at Frank Fiction, Nicole at Nicole's Bookish Nook, as well as Farah at Bookstalgic. I had a lot of fun with this tag. Thanks so much, Jen and Amy, for tagging me. If there are any fallish books or spooky books that you think I might enjoy, let me know in the comments below. As always, I really appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for watching. And until our paths cross again, stay amazing and be adventurous.